All right. Um, the boom, bong, bong. Go back here. All right. You ready? Yep. Count it down. Coming at you in three, two. I think um, you need to say clearly what happened. Who gives a fuck? I don't care if he personally hit Candace Owens and her stinky crank crack. No good thing starts with, I was thinking about my ex. He ain't learned his lesson. That's a brother ain't gonna learn shit. I know this is gonna be up. I don't care. Okay. Let's keep this shit funky. <laughs> 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 Welcome, salutations. What's unpopping, good people? Welcome to Unpopping Show, home of unpopular opinions. I am T Storm, and as always, joined by my partner in crime, Mr. DJ Mike Swift. What's happening? What's crackalating? Uh, pay the cost of admission as you come in the door. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends and family. And if you feel so inclined, leave a comment. Shout out to uh, all the folks that's been joining us. You know, we been growing this thing uh, for the past, what, two years? We actually missed yeah. our anniversary, T. Our right. anniversary was a couple like, weeks like ago. A, right. <laughs> two years. Yeah. Two years. You know, well, you know what? I ain't the only thing we forgot. We forgot two years past because COVID. <laughs> so it's not just this. It's not just us. There's a bunch of folks that's like, was that yesterday or three years ago? Like, I, it's, it feels the same. So I know I can dig it. We forgot um, it was, what it was like to touch people. Right? Right. <laughs> exactly. Except for R. Kelly, who's being touched as we speak. Congratulations, bro. Well, I mean, and uh, Mystical is soon to be right behind oh, him. Oh, yeah. Um, Danger! Uh, man, his first lyric, what was the song? I came in. I came in with my schlong in my hand. I'm replacing the word schlong. I'm, <laughs> that's not exactly what he said, but you get the point. I came in with my in my hand. Like, wh- wait, huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> that's how you gonna start this conversation, bro? Like, well, that, that don't, I don't feel right at all. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, my, um, my, my man is, uh, he's in trouble. I mean, we I guess we just jumping right into just it. Jump right into it. No, go, go, go yeah, for it. Let's do he, it. He's in trouble, man. He, uh, <laughs> He's he's in he's in jail, being held without bond mm. for um. I'm trying to find the YouTube safe language. Um, un 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 unauthorized uh touch. Yes, unauthorized touch, and then some. Um, you know what? Let me let me let me pull up. Uh, let me, first, let, me, <laughs> right. let me switch that shot, and then let me just pull up the story, and it's probably easier to just to read the story. Uh, from KOMO News, New Orleans rapper Mystical was arrested over the weekend in Ascension Parish, just outside Baton Rouge. Authorities said Monday he is facing multiple charges, including a um, intimate physical assault mm. allegation, uh, simple criminal damage to property, false imprisonment, Damn, domestic. False imprisonment. Yeah, domestic, um, uh, the A word with the B U S E in the in in the the rest of the spelling, uh, battery, strangulation, simple robbery, and first degree grape, as a lot of people call it <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> it's amazing adding a G to that word can beat the algorithm. That's, that's just funny. amazing to me. Uh, you don't want to be accused of grape. That's some. <laughs> Grape is a serious thing, people. And the Fruit of Balloons guy is like, <laughs> like what the dude? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> you, got uh, bottles, according- you got bottles of wine going. Wait a minute, goddamn it. That ain't got nothing to do with us. <laughs> and I ain't never grape nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having way too much fun with it. Sorry, continue. It, it is the common word that I hear people use on, on YouTube to kind of get around being flagged and, and whatnot, but... Um, according to the sheriff's office, around 11.58 p.m. Sunday, deputies responded to an area hospital to investigate uh, a assault of an intimate nature. After speaking with the victim, uh, Mystical, whose name is Mike, Michael Tyler, was identified as a suspect in the uh, assault and arrested, according to the sheriff. The victim suffered minor injuries... And what the sheriff describes as an attack. Hmm. My man's 51 years old. He's 
like you said uh, before we hit the intro, he uh, he's dealing with charges of a very similar nature from 2017, and he spent six years in prison back in 2003 when he pled guilty to uh, uh, intimate time battery. Um, yeah, so, I, you know, I hate to be the one to say where there's smoke, there's fire, because I truly don't believe in that, but, oh my God, bro. Uh, um, <laughs> Oh yeah. my God, bro! Like, hey, come on, man! What are you doing? And I've met, I've met him. I've met him and spent time with him, actually. Yeah. Many, many, many years ago, back when he was he was really hot. Um, he, I actually probably never told you this story. So it was back when I was music director over at at Hot. Uh-huh. Uh You know, Mystical had a label. He had his own little record label, mm-hmm. and it was a guy in town. And I won't say his name because he probably doesn't want to be associated with anything to do with mystical <laughs> at this point. Especially but there was, when there's grapes involved. <laughs> right. So there was a guy in town and he was in town pushing records. You know, they come in, the record reps come in and they like, yo, I got this record. I got that record. Mm-hmm. And he brought in a record. It was a pretty hot record. And he and I were talking and he goes, dude, you look real familiar. Um, and, I, and, and the conversation moved a little bit. And, you know, I was like, oh, well, you know, where are you from? What do you do? And he told me he worked at uh, a college in New Orleans. And I said, oh, you're, you're probably teaching my sister. And he uh-huh. said my sister's name. And I said, yeah, that's my sister. And he was like, get out of here for real. And I was like, yeah, 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 that's my sister for real, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, she passed that class. Um, <laughs> and this room. And, and I played the record. So. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm, folks, the, the more of the story, the part. more and more stories. Not what you know is who you know. No, no, that's the wrong message. No, okay. Yeah. But no, after that, you know, I was in touch with that cat a lot. Got mm-hmm. in touch with Mystical a few times, and whenever, like, I was out in New Orleans uh, once, and and he picked me and the people that I was out there with up, and took us to a spot, and we all broke bread and kicked it or whatever. So, uh, I at that time, I got no sense from him that he was on, on nothing crazy. He was just, he was a chill guy. Um, so yeah, this is, it's shocking, you know, not this time. The, <laughs> the second time I think was probably more shocking than the first time. Yeah. Um, and now it's just like, bro, what is happening with you, man? Uh, I said it in the intro. He ain't going to learn shit. <laughs> that brother ain't going to learn shit. That, that's apparently, clearly. Um, it's very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. Yeah, like I said, I mean, once, twice, and the third time, and that's just what we've heard about. So who can, you know. I got yeah. down into the comments of um, one of the one of the posts about this, and it was some people saying, yo, we've heard about this kind of thing from him for years. Mm. And I was like, what? So, I mean, it, to your point, it might might have been a little more talk on the streets about what was going on with him and, and all of this stuff, man. But, yeah, you know. Hey, man. Yeah, it's, you know, to, 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 the, to the alleged victims, I, I, I don't even know what to say. I hope you, you know, get some healing and justice, you know. And if it's not true, if it's some big misunderstanding because of his song lyrics, I came in the room with my blank in my hand, I, then I, I wish him luck. Proven, you know, after saying something like that, that's kind of sorry. Yeah, it's you know, look and and look, I I, it's it's I've said it commonly on here, and it's known commonly that I consume quite a bit of um, manosphere content, and and I swim in those lanes, and you know, the narrative in that space a lot of times is you know, women women will falsify these types of things, and I'm like, yeah, that does happen sometimes. But if let's let's be accountable, right? And let's be fair. Yeah. If you find yourself being accused of something multiple times, you doing something wrong, bro. Yeah. Right? Like either you're doing what they're accusing you of, or right. you you're putting, putting yourself-, yourself in these situations to right. be accused of it. Like right. the accountability has to fall squarely on his shoulders. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's 
again, I wish him luck. Either way it goes. Good luck on the outside or good luck back on the inside. We bunk mates with R. Kelly. (laughs) I'm not going to do it. Nope. (laughs) That's not what Bubba said. Ah. (laughs) Aura. (laughs) What is this? Hurt rectum? (laughs) HR. HR. Listen, uh, they're going to be in there making them do a concert. <laughs> and the debate is going to be who's opening up first. <laughs> my uh, my favorite uh, drop I-, I use on the air. You're trying to kill me. You're killing me. You're killing me. <laughs> so... Oh God! I get a kick out of that's the only R. Kelly rec- only R. Kelly sounds I can play these days. Apparently, so I, I, I I'm once again a DJ. I, okay, on the air I, in New York City, I'm on the air on a radio station, new radio station, um, throwback station, ninety four point seven, the block. Um, if you're around New York City, uh, Saturday nights, ten p.m. That's when I, I you know I get on to do my thing. Um, if you're not in New York City, uh, it's called the Odyssey app. You can catch us online. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, on the Odyssey app. So um, I was representing the station last night. I was out. Um, I, I, it's, I have to get accustomed to getting out and about again, going out to the city. Because I, I can, you know, I could be quiet. You know, usually when I go to the spots, I just, I just people watch. I, you know, I'm there if I go out. Um, last night, I people watched and shook hands. And, well, from a distance, shook hands and bumped fists and stuff like that because... <laughs> Monkey pops and COVID and uh, <laughs> yo. Speaking of monkey pops, I'm sorry. Did you see the the video of that girl with the monkey pox all on her mouth? Yeah. Oh, dude, that's so gross. <laughs> it was so it gross. is horrifying to look at. And, and 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 I said this to my wife. I'm I'm looking at the folks that were all these. Uh, um, the the I can't say the c word again, can I? Because you might get flagged. But the folks that were opposing the medicine for treatment for that pandemic. We just can't, well, we're, we're still kind of in really. Yeah. I don't trust that. I'm putting it in my body. Now, you know, there's a, there's a vax for monkey pox. I want to see that same energy. I, I think it's, Oh God. It's a vaccination for another pox that they have found has success with the monkey version. Okay. Please don't quote me on that. Please do your own research. Please look it up. Um, talk, talk to doctors. Yes. <laughs> like actual exactly. doctors. I consume a lot of news, <laughs> a lot, a lot of news. So it gets jumbled in my head sometimes, which is why I sound crazy on here sometimes. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> Cause I'm getting old. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of the story that I heard. Yeah. So definitely look it up. But and if that's the case, it's like, all right, this one is out there. It's been used. It's proven. So let's not start this nonsense. Right. <laughs> right. Let's not start this. It's nonsense. real. Like it's, it's it's very concerning. I see it. Like I'm like in addition to mask, I'm going to go purchase black gloves <laughs> to move around. With, like it's that serious. It's that serious. My my sister is a um one of the first African Americans, um, female. As a president of a bank here in in New York, nice. Um, and she said she got you know they handle you know big money. Hotels reached out like, hey, this monkeypox thing is real. Be careful at the hotels that you go to. She got that call. So, oh, yeah, because you can get it from bed sheets, infected bed bed sheets. Ah, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just ah. <laughs> Nature is trying to kill us Man. all the time. So that you know, that means okay, I ain't gotta go to no hotel. Or if I do, I'm taking my own sheets. <laughs> like, it's it's that serious out here. It's crazy where we are right now. Um and then and to, to now that it's a um what they what they they marked it as a uh a, a state of emergency for, you know, in several cities and then and then federally and nationally. Yep. It's, so be careful out there. Be very, be, be, be safe out there and, and don't take anything for granted. Like, I see cats popping up with, there's a cat that put it, 
you know, there's like several different videos uh, uh, post on on TikTok and Instagram, and take it for what you want, whether it's real or not. I, I tend to err on this, you know, caution, like you know, there's a cabinet detailing their experience, and there's one dude that had had one like on his face a little bit, and he's like, so the progression of it, it went from it's fit, you know, just like one little spot inside his mouth, like in his uh, throat. Uh, he said he had it on his private areas and like, you know, that's, that was, and that's how it progressed. It spread. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I don't want to creep anyone out. Just be careful. Yeah. That's we went, uh, we went from a tangent to another tangent. Yeah. Sorry. Y'all. You were, you were, you were talking about rubbing elbows club. and being out and I took you off, off track. Yeah. I so saw I'm in the club last night. I'm hanging. There's several several interesting things happen. So my my, my coach, shout out to Shelly Wade. What up, Shelly? She's on she's on afternoons on ninety four seven the block. Um, we hung out last night, and what, what uh, DJ Mister C? It was at his club. He had, on Friday night. He has a spot, and um, she invited like she invited some folks to come through or whatever. Some you know some two of her peoples came or whatever. It was cool folks. One girl I can't remember her name. It was her birthday. And she was, you know, you know, dancing to the side next to the booth we was in. We were, we had our own booth, a VIP booth or whatever, right? And <laughs> Shelly tried to get me to dance with a girl. Like, it's her birthday. She needs to go dance. I'm like, okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> her legs work, right? Like, <laughs> she can go dance. What, what her so dancing was- got to do with me? So... I'm like, I, I'm like, okay, well, happy birthday, yo, you know. And nothing goes on. I'm sitting there drinking or whatever. Everybody in and out. I'm, I'm staying in the booth. I don't really, I can dance. At least I like to think so. I, I, I understand rhythm. I but cannot. <laughs> word, word. Word. I cannot. And I have, I have horrible rhythm. Okay. Like, I, I, I can do it as a DJ. I, I can figure out rhythm as a DJ. I can figure out rhythm as a producer. But when you, to make Bobby. my feet do yeah. it, <laughs> nah, I suck it, at that. It is a different skill. I can dig it. Yeah. But um, I can't do any of these new dances. Don't get me wrong. I just, oh, <laughs> these new dances Cass is doing, I, I'm the furthest away from that. Like, no. Anyway, so time goes on. And it's just me. I'm sitting in the booth. The sister's behind me dancing or whatever. And she kind of nudges me. She's like, you know, yo, you dance? You know, the, the dance floor is right here. You know, I'm like. And before I get to say something, I was like, eh, you know. she's like, oh, don't tell me you got to be drunk to dance. I was like, no, I ain't got to be drunk. I, yeah. What are you drinking? <laughs> what, what, what you drinking? Oh, I don't know. I'm drink, I'm trying to decide on this and that. I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go to the bar. And I caught up with Shelly at the bar real quick. <laughs> this just got out of there. <laughs> and... Cause it's like I don't want to dance. I I'm, I didn't come here to dance. I understand right. it's your birthday, and then I don't know you, lady. Like no offense, but you know, you know, I'm just yeah. Stay away from it, man. I, yeah, I'm cool. Like you know, I, I yeah. So, in any case, walking back from the bar, walking back from the bar, um, a brother stopped me. He was like, "Hey, man." You like a celebrity or something, ain't you? I'm like, <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> here, here we go again. I just got a smile. I'm like, what you mean? He's like, no, 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 no. It's an older brother too, a little older gentleman. No, 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 no. Seriously, seriously, nah. I recognize you, man. Like, I ain't up on all the hip hop and stuff, man. But you know, I've, I've, I watched MTV, and you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, oh, here we go. He's like, uh, he's trying to place me. Well, I'm like, who do you think I am? He was like, um, EFMD something. <laughs> I said, oh, from EPMD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. EPMD. I said, brother, I am not Eric Sermon. <laughs> and he just, he was just like, Really? <laughs> like he's giving me the eye. Like you sure? <laughs> Cause I, I think you. Yeah, you him. That's not me, brother. I, I, you know, that's not me. He's like, and he laughed at it. He laughed about it. He was like, you get that a lot. I'm like, yes. 
I do. <laughs> All right, so I got I got a shot of Eric up right now next to you. I, and I'm looking and <sighs> a little, a little bit, but not enough for people to be like, yo, you are Eric Sermon. I get it. I've gotten it in clubs. I've gotten it in the street. I've gotten it at the airport going through security. Security be like, hey, uh, Eric Sermon, right? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> be like, Will that get me through this lane right, faster? Get it faster? If like, it will, then yes. Right. <laughs> so here, I, I'm going to make this pledge right here. And um, I, I've met Eric on, on a few ta- few occasions and Pash as well. Pash um, <laughs> jokingly said, hey, man, if this dude don't show up for shows, I'm calling you. <laughs> <laughs> so from here on out, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just run with it. I'm going to run with it. Eric, I am so sorry, but they listen, they forced in my hand. I'm going to run with it and I'm going to say some funny shit. So uh, you start getting news or something, somebody coming back say, hey, didn't I see you yesterday? No, that was me. Just just know I'm running with it and I'm going to crack a lot of jokes about this. So let's- They're going to be like, yo, Eric, they said, my man said they saw you in the mall with two little kids, man. Like, <laughs> you got new babies, man. <laughs> right, yeah. Hey, tell us, man. Now, Eric, he's been out in L.A. working with Dr. Dre on some things. Oh, wow. So, uh, that's yeah, got to yeah. be dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to see what, what that comes about. And it's, if hopefully it's, it's, hopefully it's Eric's project and not Dr. Dre's. Because if it's Dr. Dre's, we ain't going to never see it. <laughs> we all still waiting to detox still, man <laughs> we've been waiting man. for 10 years to detox so yeah so shout out shout out to Eric Sermon my, my twin Eric Sermon that's my twin that's what I'm going with <laughs> I'm, I'm running with that uh, what, what, one more thing let me just I, I have to tell this story so um, my neighborhood here in, in Jersey I have uh, my some neighbors that I absolutely adore across the street um, I, I, I'll affectionately call them my light skin neighbors because they not as dark as us. Fair enough. Um, Caucasian, but we won't call them that. So I think, okay. So I was prepping for my show, my Saturday night show. Um, and I was, I, I had played some D'Angelo on my show on, on the radio. And I was telling was my neighbor about him yesterday. I was uh, and I was telling my 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 neighbor Charlotte Caroline. Hey Caroline, um, yeah, I'm playing. You know, you know who D'Angelo is. And I was there into a bunch of other music of artists I've never heard of. Sometimes it's like some these these rock and off brand rock groups and bands and local bands and all that stuff. I, I they they say some shit like the you know the Livers or something like that. I'm like I don't know that <laughs> band who that is. What is that? no the Livers is a dope band. We used to go see him at this little pub over here. Oh, okay, so I'm telling her about D'Angelo. Yeah, like, hey, I play some D'Angelo because um, I played I played. Um, uh, you're gonna have to edit me. Uh, shit, damn motherfucker on the radio for the first time because there was never a clean version of it. And I was giggling to myself that I was going to do that. And I was telling Caroline about it. And she's like, uh, D'Angelo, I'm not. Uh. I said, oh, you, you got to have heard, you've heard of D'Angelo. So I pulled up one of his biggest records, Untitled, How Does It Feel? The video for it. <laughs> and I said, um, and I played, I said, here, enjoy this. And I walked away from her to go, to go deal with my son, Tahir. And in the background, I can see her watching it. If you're familiar with the video, you know it's 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 a it's it's just D'Angelo in front of a black background, shirtless, obviously bottomless. Yeah, that brother ain't got no pants on either, man. Like he <laughs> he's oiled up, you know what I'm saying, you know. And uh and the camera does these things where it zooms in, zooms out, goes down. Right or right, right before the crotch area, you can see like the little dip. I remember this. I didn't watch the video. <laughs> I haven't watched the video in years, but I remember being traumatized. Like, God damn it, D'Angelo, why'd you do that to us, man? How my woman gonna expect me to look like this? How the f- how does it feel? <laughs> well, that's you should be asking him now. How does it right, feel? Right. Yeah, because he looks like us now. But in yeah, case. <laughs> But I watched Caroline in the, in the background just kind of, you know, you know, adjust herself a few times. And I walked over and she was beat red like, oh, my. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she 
She's like, I'll be back. I'm going to go talk to my husband. (laughs) (laughs) So fast forward a day later, I'm talking with Caroline's mom. Hi, Tish. And I was telling, I was joking. I was laughing about Caroline, you know, being all hot and bothered over this music video, D'Angelo. And Tish, um, raised in Puerto Rico, looks at me and goes, I I don't do D'Angelo. Who is that? I'm like, oh, (laughs) hold on. (laughs) Tish is... This is a grandmother, a uh, woman of a certain age, you know, up there. So I, I hand her, I hand her the phone the same way. <laughs> and Tish, go, Tish has the same, re- like, and Caroline comes out and sees her watching. Oh, yeah. She's like, she's talking about the comments in the video. Does the top comment said, oh, he looks like he smells so nice. Tish goes, I don't care how he smells. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that's a mom and grandma um orn <laughs> basically right yeah that was that weird incestuous crap <laughs> yeah it was, it was weird it was, it was pretty funny so i introduced my neighbors to some 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 brown sugar if you will <laughs> <laughs> and so that's 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 still going they have been introducing and showing their other friends <laughs> he, he's gonna be like Yo, why did my Instagram just jump by like 10,000 followers in one day? Man, it's hilarious. They, uh, my, my wife was over there um, and they showed their grand. So Tish's mom, the great grandmother, they showed her the video. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> and she had, I, she had a similar reaction. I'm like, oh, my goodness. What have I started? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Now, um, I, I was, was I was in conversations about him yesterday, and I unfortunately I can't share why I was in conversations <laughs> right. uh, about him and who I was in those conversations with. But it was a considerable amount of the conversation, so it's just interesting that, um, you know, so many years after that song came out, so many years after he made that initial impact and in what people call neo soul, mm-hmm. that his name is is still out there. Um, and what I discovered, this I can say, what I did not realize, I knew he had worked with Angie Stone. I knew he and Angie Stone were in a, uh, a relationship and a couple, and I know that they have a child. But what I didn't know is how instrumental she was on those first two projects of his and how much of that music she wrote and wow. how much of that direction, um, uh, his, his, how he did, did his vocals, how he got on the beat. Um, how he produced. She was very, very instrumental in a lot of that stuff, wow. um, which I had no idea about until yesterday. Wow. That's dope. Yeah, I, I yeah. mean, Angie Stone is dope herself. She is. To, she's she's real that. dope, actually. She's real dope. But the work dope, speaks man. for itself. These, you know, how, what, 20-something years later? I mean, yeah, of course. He, you know, he should still be in the conversation. He still still reflect on his work. I and mean, honestly, he should still be putting music out. You know what um, I mean? Last, God, when was the last album he put out? I don't know. I think he did something. He's, I mean, he's still performing. He put out a project. I remember that. Mm -hmm. I just, I just remember there was some sort of video or something of him more recent, like, you know, within the last five, 10 years or so. And um, he had the dad bod. It's all good. We we all there. We all there, brother. We all, we all get them extra five pounds that come with each of your life. (laughs) It's what it is. Listen, how does it feel? I just uh, (laughs) thought, Leave it there. <laughs> he did. He did a project in fourteen. Okay. He did one in thirteen. He did one in fourteen. Yeah. Black Messiah was the fourth, two thousand fourteen. So it's been a while. It's been a while since he put out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've started. I've started something in my neighborhood, which is interesting. Got all um, these all these women in your neighborhood thirsting. Yeah, man. Don't don't be surprised when you out there cutting the grass and they're giving you lemonade. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> Bringing over casseroles and shit. Right. Like, <laughs> hey, T, how you doing? <laughs> like, or no, like on uh, Friday. Hey, Miss Parker. <laughs> my, All I got to do is say, Kaylee, get yeah. Sam Jackson. <laughs> no, we're going to leave Sam where he at. That is a private joke. We cannot, cannot, absolutely cannot reveal 
the meaning of Sam Jackson. We have appropriated Sam's name um, <laughs> for, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, we'll leave it there. Um, oh. Thirst, I have a thirsty story for you. Um, once upon a time, a, a, a comedian who worked on a, uh, a weekly uh, national sketch comedy show um, hooked up with the Thirst Queen and um, got into some drama. Can we name the Thirst Queen? Absolutely. One, Kim Kardashian. And... Not so bad or something, brother. I mean, I won't call him thirsty at all. He's just out here living. Um, Pete Davidson. It has been reported, uh, TMZ has reported that they have split after nine months of, you know, nine months, nine, nine month relationship. Has it been that long? Almost a year. It was last summer. They, they, were, they were together since last summer. And it spilled over into the new season of SNL. So by the time they that she when she hosted when she was on there hosting, and they shared that kiss on screen on SNL, uh, they had been together for a while already. Um. So I, I'm not familiar with the story. Admittedly, you mentioned it to me at the top of the show um, before we hit intro. Mm -hmm. So I have nothing to contribute. But so you you have to catch me up on this. Okay. <laughs> who so left who? <laughs> well, I, well, I mean, when it's when it's Kim Kardashian, everyone gets left. <laughs> it's it's never you never walk away, uh, you know, on, of your own. It's I, and, and that's my that's my opinion about it. That's what I, I'm I'm alleging. You say um, left. I prefer to say escaped. Well, you don't escape. You get booted. Like this. Very, this very. There's not. There's been no man. That has willingly walked away from Kim Kardashian. Name one. Um, the the ball player she married. Chris Humphreys? Yeah. He they left. Divorced. Did he file for divorce or did she? I think he filed. I think he was done with that. Okay. I'm I'm not sure. Well, sources close to the couple say the pair decided, decided to end things. According to E, who first reported the split, the pair's uh, constantly busy schedules and distance apart made it really hard to keep up their romance. Hmm. No, so Kim, Kim filed for divorce from him. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? They were married for 72 days. <laughs> yeah, see what I'm saying? I bet I, I imagine Chris Humphreys was in bed like on his phone and looked up and was like, Hey, you filed for a divorce? <laughs> like, when did you do this? Oh, yeah, this is not, yeah, this is not going to play into the storyline I want real quick. So, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, you know, um, I, I, I think Pete Davidson is, you know, he'll be fine. He's had some baddies. <laughs> they keep coming to him. He'll get, we'll look up and he, he'll be, he'll be with another baddie somewhere. So. I never got the impression and and I will preface this by saying I did not spend a lot of my energy trying to figure out what was going on there. But I never got the impression that he was just really into her. Like, oh, I've got the best girl and I want to make a go at it and I'm going to be very happy. I got the impression that it was like, oh, she's she's digging me. OK, eh, I'll run <laughs> with it. Man, I ride. See what goes. See how it goes. That sounds and like a. That sounds like a bit that they did on. He did on SNL. It was like, "Hey, the world's about to explode." Eh, okay, <laughs> like these really. Yeah, I mean, uh, listen. Well, well, then there is a story, and it is a story. I, I don't know if it's confirmed or not that he um, tatted um, their kids. Her, well, Kim Kardashian and Kanye's kids tatted their initials somewhere on his body. Yeah. Um, and then I, I think he got a he got like a a Kim Kardashian tat as well. Why? Why? So, <laughs> so, so as to whether he took it seriously, and I, uh, allegedly, he has Kim and her kids tatted on his body somewhere. If you're getting tattoos, you're taking it seriously. Yeah. So I stand corrected. If if yeah. if the allegation is true. 
then I stand corrected. Yeah, you know, he may be questioned, you know. Look, far be it from me to shame anyone for the decisions that they make uh, or any of that stuff. But you can look at patterns and make decisions. What do I mean by that? If you, if, let's just take me for example. Mm. If I was out in them streets and every time you saw me at a, uh, you know, as we moved in similar circles, mm. you saw me with a different chick every time, you can observe based on my behavior that I'm probably, it is, it is highly likely that I'm not very interested in settling down and being, you know, a faithful kind of a guy because of the way that I'm moving in public, because of what I'm showing people uh, uh, of who I am and, and, and how I handle my business. If someone were to look at her and her patterns and how she moves from a relationship standpoint and from a business standpoint, why would they look at that situation and say, this is going to be forever? It has been proven time and time again that A, it's not forever, and B, the most important thing to her isn't you. You will probably be number five or six at best. Children, career, uh, family, um, um, social status, and social status and family, that those may trade some positions, and then you. And then you. No, money. And then you, so that puts you at the number six. There, there you go, the number six yeah. spot. So, I, I mean, I'm not saying that she or anyone who moves in that manner don't deserve love or don't deserve a healthy, monogamous, long-term relationship. It's, again, putting, putting the accountability square on the shoulders of where it belongs. If you want those things, then you must move in a manner to bring those things to fruition in your life. If you move in a manner that's contrary to bringing those things to fruition then you would be insane to think that doing these things that are contrary to the goal that you want to achieve are going to help you achieve that goal. So I don't, that was a long way and a long winded way of saying, bruh, <laughs> what was you thinking? <laughs> I mean, Pete, Pete is young. He's on, you know, he's on TV. He's uh, you know, he's like, yeah, why not smash Kim Kardashian? It's the tattoos part though. Yeah, well, he he does, you know, he's done some things. And not even just smash, right? Cuz cuz I don't want to minimize it to that, right? Not even just smash because there look, there are opportunities and there are times where people just smash. It's fine, it's whatever, you're adults. But I don't think it's just either just smash or in a relationship forever and married and with the white picket fence. I think it's some gray there. Right. I think you can be in a relationship with a person, you can date a person and you can have a good time and be respectful and have a great relationship by the very definition of that word, meaning two humans are relating to each other without without that having to end in marriage. Yeah. Now, do I think that's the preferred method? No, but I think it happens all the time. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, I, I, if he's getting tattoos if he's booed up, then he wasn't just smashing. Okay. Well, at the end of the day, that's all it was. <laughs> so <laughs> he sh he should have did what he had to do to stay in there and and then get married and divorced and then ask for spousal support. Ooh, that would have been beautiful. Because <laughs> clearly, I mean, obviously, she makes more money out of the two of them. Yeah, 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 and then she, yeah. Well, he. I'm sure the the New York in him wouldn't let him. I mean, then again, he is from Staten Island, and that is a different beast altogether. But <laughs> no shade to Staten Island. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I got love for all five boroughs. Uh, I have love for all five boroughs, I, honestly. But Dave Dave Chappelle said it. Fucks everything on Staten Island except Wu Tang. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, <laughs> it's, it's not, nah, well, you know, you know he, I'm sure he's young. He'll be out. He'll be out. Um, yeah, I'm, I think he'll be fine. You know, he, the the rumors of his endowment will keep his <laughs> his DMs popping for a while. 
I just I just hope his decision to leave SNL wasn't wrapped in oh. Kim Kardashian. You know Ooh, what I mean? That would be terrible. I, I would hope that it wasn't that had no influence on it. I would hope. You know what I mean? He's gonna be fine. He's he, he, people when they leave SNL, they do great things. Um, and I, and and he has a promising future ahead of him. I'm sure he'll do some movies. He'll do some more stand up and do a bunch of different things. I think they're, you know, he'll be fine. But I just hope she was like, yeah, yeah, you should leave. <laughs> like, and he was like, okay, okay and yeah, right, yeah. I love you, baby. Okay, I quit I got my you. job. <laughs> like, damn. I did um, that once in my life, once, mm. and I I regret it to this day, and I will never ever ever do that again ever i didn't quit the quit a job i stopped working a business that i had started wow. <laughs> which you know I, I think i find a way in every show to bring up patrice o'neill <laughs> um but it, it it makes me think of a, a bit that patrice o'neill did where um <laughs> he and i'm gonna ruin this joke i'm gonna ruin the joke so i'll just give you the, the highlights it's you know um, if a woman met a guy who's a fisherman and she was interested in him for being a fisherman, after a while, she'll say, well, I mean, why you spend so much time fishing? <laughs> and then yeah. the guy goes, okay, and he gets rid of his boat. And then she looks at him later and goes, you ain't even got a boat. <laughs> That's what happened when I did it. And I, it. I, I the one time, and I'm like, never again, never, ever again. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, no. Nah. Um, there was another split that uh, uh, that happened um, that rocked the uh, black Twitter sphere. Um, talking about one Jesus and Miro. Um, if you've never seen, if you're not familiar with the Bodega Boys, some New Yorkers, of course, from the Bronx, um, they be, they had came into popularity into. Into mainstream America, they infiltrated mainstream America. They was on Showtime. It was Showtime, and there was some straight n words on air. Like there was, yeah. they was being them. They were being themselves. Let's be clear, they weren't putting. I don't think they were putting on, but they introduced like that hood dialect to you know to the world, and with, and Showtime embraced it and 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 lifted them. They they started on was it Vice. On TV, it was on Vice, and then moved that. One of those male different. skewing, one of those male skewing cable channels. And it's I, I not watch, many of them. Yeah, I, um, there was what what as a podcast I saw him on, um, Math Math Hoffa. Um, uh, it was uh, Miro. What was it? I you know what? I get them confused. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where I insert my obligatory. Uh, it's because we all look alike. <laughs> Joe. Yes. I think I've, I've thrown that out there maybe five times since we've been doing this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very famous. Um, cause that's not, cause I think that's not the name that he goes by. Why I can't, in okay, any case. Um, uh, Joel Martinez. Yeah. Uh, is Mero. Daniel Baker is Jesus. Hmm. Who was on Math Hoffa? I think it was Jesus. Jesus is the light skinned one with the beard, tall brother. Uh, Miro is the shorter, dark skinned brother, bald. Um, and in any case, so he talked about how they had, you know, been on, you know, they took that. They were doing a podcast. They started with a podcast. He was working a regular gig or whatever, and somewhat hustling, <laughs> right? And they took the they you know he was he was writing you know doing like a blog or whatever on on social media, and got contacted about being a writer for like uh, Comedy Central. Um, I, you you have to watch the math the math Hoffa um, podcast. It, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a really it's really good, um, and it, the details are, are way better than what I'm giving right now. But the fact that they split, um, Jesus and Mario have split, um, according to CNN. Uh, the Kid Mero has shared that his split with creative partner Jesus and Mero host Jesus Nice was more than a year in the making during an appearance on S uh, Sirius XM's basic podcast, which was recorded late July after the announcement that the Showtime late night show was being canceled. Mero said he and Jesus had discussed pursuing separate interests for over a year prior 
to the show coming to an end. Quote, that conversation solidified us in signing overall agreements that recognized our intent to operate independent of one another. Mero said, as far back as June of last year, we were both pitching or looking to join exiting projects as individuals, unquote. Um, <clears throat> I don't understand how, how for a year you can be not into it or planning on not doing it and still do it. Right. And maybe it's because we don't have the golden handcuffs. Right. Like if if I woke up tomorrow and I was just like, yo, I don't want to do this no more. I would call you and be like, bro, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, but I guess we're not raking in two point five million dollars a year from doing it. So it's <laughs> right, right. <laughs> when you're yeah. broke, it makes separating very easy. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. No, I, I you know. I hope it wasn't a any type of bad blood type thing, you know what I mean? Because at this at this stage in our lives, and they are they may be a little younger than us, but they're within the same yeah demographic, right? To have beef, like you know, I, to have some sort of beef like that take over and make the reason why you don't you know make some money with somebody is kind of ridiculous. So. Um. There have been reports that the pair, and this is according to Deadline, there have been reports that the pair separated over issues relating to their manager, Victor Lopez, and his involvement with their Showtime series. Mm. They didn't go into any further detail on that. I'm sorry. Hang on. Folks, forgive me. A little behind the scenes, my... Something's getting ready to die on me. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> um yeah, uh I wish them luck. They were funny. They were really they were really um talented cute dudes. My dog just walked in here and God damn it. Knocked over my light almost. Um I lost my train of thought. Uh yeah, I'm just kind of reading on deadline. It's just based on what he's saying, what uh Mero is saying that they felt like it was just kind of, it was winding down. It was coming to an end. You know, mm, really? he said it wouldn't have been the same to force a partnership quote, that's coming to a natural end. He admitted that it was a hard decision and the intent was to go their own ways in a supportive way, quote, supportive way. At the end of the, this is all quote, at the end of the day, when things are winding down, you got to recognize that they are winding down and not supermax Patrick Ewing when he was, uh, when he has, Two knee pads and his career is coming to a close. That is funny. <laughs> Did he call him Super Max? <laughs> Patrick Ewing. I remember. I'm not a big sports fan, but I remember when Patrick Ewing was out there looking old. <laughs> like, bro, you got you got to sneak a deal and everything. Just let it go, man. Let just it let go. it go. He was trying to get a chip. Uh, the Knicks just did not help that happen. So, yeah, yeah. Which is why I stopped supporting the Knicks. I still love them. I just moved on to the Nets. That's all. Because they have a chance. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> True story. When I took my, my I took my sons, my oldest sons, to their first basketball game, I took them to see the then New Jersey Nets because there was a chance they might win. They didn't, but <laughs> it could have happened. So, yeah. So that's uh, Jesus and Mero. I wish them luck, man. That's, you know, and I'm sure them brothers will do. They'll be fine by themselves. You know, I'm, I, you know. It's just, I it's, hope so. I mean, I hope so. I can't it's think for of the fans. Yeah, it's kind of like when Key and Peele, right? You know, they were on top of the world, and you know, they they separated, and it's like, all right. Uh, well, look at who is Key, it? Jordan is it Key, Key Peele? It's Peele. Jordan Peele. Peele. Jordan Peele. Yeah, he's on top of the world. It, it's working out for him. Phenomenal, like, but not in comedy. No. But you know what? Watching watching Key and Peele, those those bits that they were record they were they were doing those dark comedy sketches had those elements in it. Yeah. What he's putting on what he's putting in films now is it had those elements back then. So like to watch Nope, which is dope. I didn't mean to rhyme there. I'm just saying. Um <laughs> Hey. Hey, <laughs> Eric Sermon. <laughs> See what happens, people. See what happens. <laughs> I tell, I tell you my pain. 
I open myself and tell my pain, and you use it against me. It's what no. dudes do. <laughs> right, right. It's what we do. Right, right. Hey, hey the, <laughs> so she burnt you again, huh? <laughs> like, like, wait a minute. I told you that in confidence. <laughs> well, I tell you this in confidence. She burnt me too. <laughs> We got it in common, see? See how that works? <laughs> we nah, on that but- mystical. <laughs> no, uh, no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> well, that that first that first charge did involve his homeboys, the one he went to jail for. Oh uh, yeah. But I don't well, think any of his homeboys went to jail with him though. He's the only one that ran in there with his junk in his hand. I mean, that's <laughs> Danger. That, that, made, that made them go, hey, hey, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ronnie. Right? The joke about grape allegations. <laughs> so, um, but no, nah, he's done so. So, but watching um, us and get out and and the last, this latest one, nope, they are, they, they are phenomenal, and and it's great to see us on the screen in leading roles, leading the story, you know, and it's not a quote unquote black movie, you know, and I. Again, if you've watched any of the show, you know at this point how I feel, watched or listened to any of the show, you know at this point how I feel. My biggest critique is and always has been that when we get the opportunity to tell a story, we we tell some stereotypical hood or something, right? It's it's right. it's a drug movie or series. It's, you know, a gang movie or series. It's it's uh oh shit it's buffoonery it's it's the uh the the big mama stereotype right it, it's always kind of that so yeah. look i i didn't love get out the way other people loved get out i thought get out was interesting i didn't watch us cuz it just looked way too creepy for me uh, <laughs> <laughs> the trailer scared me i was like nope <laughs> <laughs> um but th- th- all of that said, I love, love, love that he is telling stories that are uniquely his voice, that w- it has an element of the struggle, right? The African-American struggle or the African um, plight. Uh, plight in America, in America struggle. Um, but it's not overpowering the story, right? right. I, I I love what he's doing and I want more people to do it. I want more people to say, I can be listened to. I can be, I, I can have um, patronage and, and tell what I want to tell. Um, I just got to find a way to make it palatable to the, pal- palatable to the audience. You got to put a little bit of sugar in the medicine, right? So, um, I like what he's doing and I want more people to do it. I want those opportunities to exist and hopefully his success doing it his way will open those doors for other people to be able to, to get the funding to do it, um, get the the companies to distribute it and, and get people to support. Yeah. Well, you were telling me about uh, Brittany Griner's one of Brit- Brittany Griner's baby daddies. Well, Brittany Renner, Brittany Renner, was, sorry. Was, the Griner is a different... That's, yeah, we ain't gonna see her for a while. Yeah, sorry. She got nine years. She got nine years, man. For a vape pen. Nine years. In the words of R. Kelly. You trying to kill me! You killing me! You killing me! That's exclusive audio taken from R. Kelly's cell. <laughs> <laughs> the pounding you hear is... Okay, anyway. <laughs> His cellmate called Big Cheeks. Um, uh, yeah, no, so, you know, we talked about Brittany Renner last week and, you know, her meltdown and everything. Mm-hmm. Well, her, her baby daddy is in the news. Mm-hmm. Uh, one Mr. P.J. Washington, I think he still plays for the Charlotte Hornets, 25-year-old young man, Got with uh, arguably the wrong woman and made a baby in one Miss Brittany Renner, and she's beating up them pockets like <laughs> she's she's beating them pockets up. Mm. But you know, 
again, in, in Manosphere space, we talk about accountability. Accountability rests on his shoulders for his bad decision. Generally, people say, once you know better, you do better. Where apparently he didn't know better. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Mr. PJ Washington is expecting another baby. Oh, and I said oh. 25. He is not 25. He is 23. So oh. Correct. Okay. He's 23. His, his girlfriend, not his wife, uh, just turned 25. Miss, uh, what is Miss Alicia's last name? Uh, I can't find her last name. But one Miss Alicia, we'll just call her Alicia, went up on social media on her 25th birthday to announce essentially that she is with child from PJ Washington. Got him. Again. (laughs) I got him, (laughs) y'all. That's that's what the announcement read. Like, I got him. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh boy. This is right. This is on the heels of his breakup with Brittany. He broke up with Brittany in September of last year. No, he broke up with Brittany in July of last year, July of 2021. Okay. He got with Alicia in September. Oh, so she was a rebound. Or she was always there, and that's why Britney was was hot and bothered and angry and left. Okay, because she never really she never really put him out there, right? She just right. you know she said yo he he was on some whack shit. It wasn't what I thought it was gonna be, and that's why I bounced. Um, so that might be it. Like that's one month. <laughs> right? He had August to weep <laughs> over the loss of Britney, and then he was like, "I'm in another relationship." Ironically, uh, Jada and Will Smith had August as well. <laughs> Sorry, it was right there. <laughs> it was right there. <laughs> it was. Well done. <laughs> well done, sir. Uh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> it, was, it was really good. <laughs> Speaking of August, Will Smith hates this month. <laughs> He ordered calendars with the month of August missing. <laughs> All his calendars just got a whole page June, is missing. July, September. Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> June, no, it'll be June. It'll be June, July, Jada, September. <laughs> oh. Oh, my God. But look, you know, he's... He's about to have another baby, man. And he's about to have another baby with another Instagram model who, look, not for nothing, she's a cutie. Yeah. He's got good taste. Oh, oh, yeah, but everything, the shine ain't go. Okay. Yeah, this this is her Instagram. Um, And I'll show what I can show because, you know, they they be doing too much on Instagram and YouTube. She got them cheeks out. (laughs) <laughs> the same I'm t- so it's a picture the picture that's up is as you know the Instagram model back shot there you go the, with the cheeks up and turned over the shoulder and it <laughs> I mean she could be Brittany Renner really they they build height complexion hair affect she could be Brittany Renner I mean, it, it could be a type or it could be, like I said, a rebound. Like, you you know, that after Shorty left, you know, Renner, after she left, you know, he just bumped into somebody that remotely reminded him of uh, his ex. Yeah, see, he bumped into her and he kept bumping into her and he kept <laughs> bumping into her. And now you got another baby on the way that he's not married to the woman. And, you know, I'm no prude. But from a legal standpoint, oh, can't show that. From a legal standpoint, <laughs> Instagram okay. says no. Yeah. Uh, from a le- not Instagram, YouTube. From a legal standpoint, it's not wise to have children out of wedlock for you as a man, because in a lot of states, you don't have rights associated with paternity. You have the obligation to pay child support but you have zero rights as a father. And when I say zero, I mean zero. 
You can't, you have no visitation rights. You have, your child doesn't have the ability to inherit from you if you die, right? You, the court has to give you those rights. Right. And that process can be held up by the mother. So it's not a good idea. Not a good idea. That's my nice. public service announcement. His yeah, brother's man. not learning, man, and it's bugging me. Yeah. It's bugging and, me. Or he's or he's just led by uh what's the word? Uh, impulse. Where's his dad? Hmm. Like where's his dad this that will say, Look, son, I'm sure she's a nice girl, but put some time on it and don't don't make children. I mean, also, I mean, and I can say this because I have grown sons, they don't always listen to us anyway. You know, my, my grown sons are, you know, are, they're, are, they're still growing and, and learning. They don't have any kids on the way or nothing. Cause I've threatened the shit out of them. Like, listen, that also <laughs> works. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you know, they don't always do, you know, you get a certain age. You need some things you got to figure out or, or, or learn the hard way for yourself. And that's a, that's a real hard lesson, man. Yeah. It's a real, real hard lesson. And for someone of his status, it's going to be harder for him, mm -hmm. right? He's, I, I can't remember what Brittany is getting in, in child support. It was something crazy. If this, if this situation that he's currently in doesn't go the distance, right? He's going to be getting pockets beat from both ends on child support, which means now at 23 years old, 23, he'll be paying out hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in child support. Let's exasperate that a little bit and take it off the money, right? And look at the other, the other implications of those bad decisions. It is, and I, I say this as a distant father, it is difficult to be a real father to a child you don't see every day. It can be done, but it is very difficult. And frankly, you have less impact being distant. Yeah. He will have two by Instagram models. <laughs> That's not funny, but it's funny. <sighs> oh my God. Okay. So there's that brother. Uh, what's his, what's his name again? What's the brother PJ name? Washington. PJ. Good luck, brother. <laughs> you look you look so serious you, the look on your face was like you were sending him off to war like <laughs> you handed and, him a rifle and said good luck brother yeah and and, and it is <laughs> it is um here's something a little light before you get out of here something a little a little lighthearted, but still weirdly <laughs> have you heard have you seen the the clip circulating with Irv Gotti on Drink Champs, shout out to Nori and, and the Drink Champs. I have not. Okay, this is worth this is worth a uh, this is worth a listen. Hang on, let me let me. Um, so <laughs> he made the news. Um, he made this. The, well, there's a clip of his interview. Hold on, let me just let me pull up pull up Nori's uh, Instagram. And also, shout out to Nori. He finally got his driver's license. <laughs> okay. He didn't have a driver's license? <laughs> have a driver's license. This, this is Nori. Now, y'all look out his license. It's over. Road rage everywhere. <laughs> I'm outside. I'm driving. I'm, this. I'm finally driving my own cars. God damn it. Yeah, at least... At least <laughs> Wait, he had cars and he couldn't drive his own cars. I mean, to be to be fair, so does Rick Ross. Rick Ross doesn't have a license. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, he, he he hadn't. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. I quit. I quit. These grown men, man. These men, they in their fifties. How old is Rick? Rick? I know Nori's got to be in his fifties at this point. Nori's Nori's, Nori's not fifty yet. No, no, Nori's not fifty I, yet. I thought he was our age. He's he's a little he's little, he's he's within our circle. Okay, but he's not. I think he's he may be like forty five or something like that somewhere okay. in there. But still, um, you don't have an excuse to not have a license once you pass like twenty three, 
right? Like, <laughs> 23 after that, it's like you get deselected for a lot of things because you don't have a license. Yeah. All like, right, I don't so, think I could trust a, a, a person who ain't got a license. <laughs> like, you ain't got no license? Yeah, nah, bro. <clears throat> we can't hang. So, uh, Irv Gotti and, and Ja Rule were on Drink, drink Champs. Oh. Let me see. <laughs> no, that's not the clip. That's not the clip. You can never had a problem, mm-hmm. right? Yes. I can get past. Here he goes. You want to be with Nelly. Sounds like you didn't get past that. I'm just being honest. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to stop this for a second. So, as we know, um, uh, Irv Gotti has talked about his relationship with Ashanti. He was also married at the time as well. That's you know, he even had a a, a reality show. They addressed it with his <laughs> with his wife. I'm not sure he, if he and his wife are still together or not. I don't know, but they weren't together when they were together. Kind of sort of. He was in and out the house from, from what I've gathered from the the the, uh, the reality show that he was on. In and out might have been the problem. Well, yeah, but. At the height of this is of Murder Inc.'s popularity, um, Irv was involved with Ashanti, and he talked about you know later on Ashanti went on to date Nelly, and he talked about how he found out that Ashanti was dating Nelly. Listen, <laughs> you too, you too. I never had a problem, mm-hmm. right? Yes, I could get past you wanting to be with Nelly. Sounds like you didn't get past that. I'm just being honest. <laughs> listen, listen. At the time uh-huh. it happens, any man, yeah, of course, is you is her. Yeah, yeah. The chick you fucking are in love with is with this shit. country grandma. You wanna you wanna hear how I found out? Uh-huh. How you found out? <laughs> country only grandma. On, only on drink chat. We saw the documentary too. Yeah, so yeah. Too. How did you find out, sir? I was at home. Uh huh. There wasn't no Twitter or Instagram back then. I was at home. Okay. Listen to this shit. This is God wanted me to find out. I was at home. NBA package. I like watching sports. Oh my God, what's this commotion going on in the stadium? Mm. We just found out what the commotion is. Nelly has walked in with the Shanti. <laughs> oh shit. Oh my God. <laughs> is that. So the so the caption the caption said Irv found out uh, Ashanti was dating Nelly while on the couch with his wife. <laughs> it's so, funny, but I got problems with this. <laughs> and, and, and as you should, I I've said this and I posted this too. He's upset that he found out that his side chick got tired of being a side chick and found a dude that would make her a main. Thank you. She is under no obligation to give you the heads up. Hey, bro, <laughs> I'm I'm not going to be the side chick anymore. It's a it's you know what it's like? It's um, you ever got a job and they say this is uh, at will employment. Right. <laughs> Me, meaning you can quit whenever you want and you don't have to give a reason and they can fire you whenever they want and they for don't what, have to give a reason. For whatever reason. We don't really like your shoes today. Um, sorry, this ain't going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> so it was at will employment and she decided to quit. She just, yeah. she didn't punch in. She was a no call, no show. She didn't, <laughs> she didn't, she didn't come to work no more. I, I got a problem with him being, look, I, I, I understand how that can affect you. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, because when you lay with a person, you connect, you build a tie, whether you want to or not. Correct. But for you to say the chick you in love with, and you got a wife? Yeah. Even if that was your truth, man, you shouldn't say that shit. Yeah, that's very shouldn't, disrespectful shouldn't to that. his wife, past or present. Ex-wife, right, yeah. 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 That's, that's not something you say. I mean, but at the... Mm, Uh-oh. I don't think... Okay. In love with... I don't think those were the correct, that was the correct description of it. He may have had strong feelings for her, but he wasn't in a place where, you know, he was trying to, he wasn't never going to leave his wife. Why would he? Why would he? Yeah. So, I I don't know. But, but, I mean, 
give it to I give it to Irv for the way he tells stories because <laughs> it's very entertaining. It's always entertaining, you know. Which but, is uh, what we hope we are. Yes. <laughs> Great way to end the show. <laughs> and listen, folks, we appreciate you watching. We appreciate you listening. If you haven't already, share, comment, and subscribe, Van Damn it! Thank you to all our new subscribers. I mean, can we shout some of them out real quick before we bounce? Can we? Do we have enough you, time? You got a that? list. You got a list of folks. I, I do. Bear with me. Um, I'm sorry, folks. I should have been more prepared. Um, but filth, one filth. Nope, that didn't work either. Um, why don't we do this? Because I wanted to talk about Ann Hesh. Why don't we just shout him out, do a quick after show. We can go over this Ann Hesh video and we shout him out in the after show. That sounds, sounds wonderful. Folks, um, if you're watching us, stay tuned to the after show. If you're listening, go to unpoppinshow.com, hit the video and you get the extra content. All right. Appreciate you watching. Appreciate you listening. Y'all be safe out there and uh, stay away from the monkeys. Peace. Peace. Stay away from the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs>